Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering, lecture number 11, Basic Machine Learning 2. This is a brief walkthrough through our uh, example for linear regression. Okay, this is for Basic Machine Learning Algorithms 2, linear regression. And as announced in the lecture, we have prepared for you a small notebook based on an example on a climate data set that we have especially prepared for you. And this is Berlin climate data from 1753 to 2013. And the task we want to solve here is simply to look at the average temperature data that we have here given in, in this data set. And we want to make a prediction based on the year. So we want to predict for a specific year, what is the temperature and we do this based on linear regression. Of course, this is only a toy example, so don't take this really serious. This is only to show you how linear regression work and how you can uh, apply it to any kind of data set where you want to do a regression. Okay, so let's start with the very first code section. So what we need here is course, we are dealing uh, with arrays, so we are using there for NumPy and uh, we use Pandas. So this is very nice data analytics tool. So I will later say a bit about that when we are using here pandas data structures. And then here we use mat, uh, matplotlib for visualizations then later on. Okay, so this is the first thing we are doing. Now we have to access the data set. As already told you, this is uh, from Kaggle, a climate change earth surfaces, uh, sorry, earth surface temperatures from Kaggle. And uh, it contains temperatures uh, from 1750 to 2013, including uh, latitude, longitude, and of course the date where the measurement has been taken. And we simply filtered, filtered out one specific city here, and this is Berlin. Okay, we have the data set stored here on GitHub. And of course, um, what we do here, we read this data set, which is given as a CSV file, so comma separated values. And um, we read this into our PD, so Panda data structure that we call here Berlin. And this is really nice. So um, uh, with uh, Pandas, you have the possibility to use a lot of high level functions that help you uh, with data analysis. So we can get a better insight into our data. So with the head function here, for example, you simply list the first n lines of your data set. And I listed here head five, which means we see the first five lines here. And you see here we have columns, date, year, 12 month average temperature, average temperature, average temperature uncertainty, city, country, latitude, longitude. So this comes simply from the original data set. For us, interesting are here only, let's say the four, um, or let's say these five columns and also this date and year is in the end a bit, uh, you know, uncritical. We only take the year in the end into account. Okay, so with the pandas data analysis library, we can do even more to get more insights into our data set. So we can, for example, use here the describe method and there we get some information. So we see here that we have in our data set 261 measurements. Um, and then for each of the columns, you see probably the mean value of each uh, single column. So the mean temperature of the 12 months average temperature they are given is 8.9 degrees Celsius, for example. Um, you have here the standard derivation, you have the minimum value, you have the maximum value, and then you have here the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and um, the median values. This is interesting for data analysis, and we will get back to this then in the next section of the lecture when we do a little bit on data analysis also. Okay, however, um, if we want to do a regression, we have to assume that there is a connection or a correlation between the temperature and the year, so the date. We assume, of course, that the temperature is rising with the growing number of years because we are now faced with climate change. And we want to see whether this is, of course, somehow reflected in the data we have here. And for that, what we can do, we can look at feature correlations. So if we want to know which feature somehow of the features we have has an influence on the 12 month average temperature, what we can do, we can calculate um, simply the correlation coefficient and we can vis visualize this 
based on a so-called heat map. And this is what we do here in the next uh, section. So we need here another library, that's the Seaborn library. And there we have the heat map parameter. And there we give in there uh, our, our pandas data structure Berlin. And here this is the correlation coefficients that we give in there. And uh, of course, then we have here a heat map and you see here green means a positive high correlation, red means a negative high correlation. And um, of course we have the year here, we have 12 months average temperature, average temperature and average temperature uncertainty. So let's see for the year. So we can look here at the first line. What, what's the, let's say, correlation between year and all of the other features we want to look at. And of course, year with itself, there is the correlation coefficient one, this is clear, but we want to see how it's dependent or correlated to the other measurements and, and data we have. So there is a correlation between year and 12 months average and vice versa between 12 months average and um, year, year of uh, 0.33. This is at least a little bit of a correlation. So this is, kind of, this is quite nice. Um, and there is a high negative correlation with the average temperature uncertainty, which probably means the older the measurement, the more uncertain the measurement, which is also clear, but we are not interested in that. So for getting to know, of course, what's uh, most likely for, let's say, um, the 12 months average temperature, the best possible feature here to choose would be the average temperature, which is clear. <laughs> The mean average temperature is computed simply from the average temperature. Therefore, there is a high correlation that doesn't help us further. But we want to see what's there, uh, the connection to the year and year between 12 months um, average temperature. This is exactly what we are looking for. OK, so we have a small chance that things might work out well. And what we do then here, of course, next is we want to have a look at our data. So this is where we need here the math blob library. And we are simply doing here a line plot of all of our values. And then, uh, no, we didn't do that. Sorry, we are doing a histogram plot. So, uh, of course, here is a berlin.hist. So we do first the histogram of all of the single features we have. And you see here, for example, in a histogram, you see the number, how many data points to have exactly this kind of value. And you see here for the 12 month average temperature, most data points here are somehow in the middle of the given temperature. So this is a standard um, distribution that we see here. It's the same here for the average temperature. And you see here for the average temperature uncertainty, most of the measurements are have a rather low uncertainty. So they are rather certain. And there are a few measurements which are highly uncertain, for example. So you see here, how is the data distribution within these kind of histograms? Okay. However, now we are going exactly to plot. And what we are going to plot is here on the X axis, we have the year and on the Y axis, we have the 12 months mean uh, or average temperature. This is what we are looking at. And we already see here that there might be something like an increase, a slight increase here towards the end in the 2000s and later on. And this, of course, we want now to figure out with the help of linear regression. So therefore, we are importing here the linear regression uh, model. And uh, of course, we also need the mean squared error because we want to know how well does our prediction really work. So here we talk more about the mean squared error than in this section of the lecture. So look at the slides or simply look at the video of the lecture and then you find out more about how linear regression really works and why we are need here the mean squared error. OK, so what we are going to do here, we are creating a LINREC model, which, which will be here our linear regression. And then we fit in there simply our year data and our temperature data into that. So let's do that. So next thing we want to do is simply we want to do the predictions and uh, then we want to see um, the predictions will be based, of course, on the linear function that exactly this linear regression, comp uh, regression computes. And then we draw into the plot first, of course, the original values and then the values of the prediction. And then we can see that. And Additionally, we also want to compute here uh, the um, mean squared error. And uh, then we simply print out the mean squared error. So this is what you see then here in the next code field. 
So you see here, this is our original data and the blue straight line here is the linear regression that we have computed with the model. This is the prediction function and the means uh, root mean square error is 0 0.7995, which means for an arbitrary year that you give here, the prediction that our predictor here delivers um, has a mean error of 0 0.8 degrees, which is quite a bit if you consider that our temperatures here always are somewhere between 7 and at most 11 degrees. So there is not much range. You can also see how well are the predictions simply by uh, comparing here the first five predictions with um, you know, the first five labels that we have here it's simply to compare them so we have here a prediction 8.44 degrees and the according label for that year would be 8.71 or here you have 8.44 again and the label would be 8.49 and so on you see of course that subsequent predictions since it's linear are pretty close and you see here how the labels vary over this small section one thing that linear regression doesn't work well might be underfitting so that the function that you want to model here is more complex and for that you could try out polynomial regression for our case i would say simply we don't have sufficient data simply the year is not enough to predict the temperature we need more factors for that to make it, uh, the pre prediction a bit more correct so we would need more kind of data different kind of data however we can try out also polynomial um, regression. What we do there is simply we are using here the polynomial features um, <coughs> model that is available also in scikit-learn. And uh, we are using this with uh, polynomials of degree eight that we simply try out here. And then we feed in again our, our values and then we do exactly the same that we did before. We simply do the linear regression with the polynomial features of degree eight and we do again the scatter plot of uh, the data and the lines and then um, we simply also look at the uh, rooted mean square error and ta -ta, we are done so you see now here the red line which is our polynomial regression function so this is already a bit better and reflects reflects better let's say the kind of curve of the values we see here. However, the rooted mean square error is still rather large. It's smaller, but it's still rather large. It's 0 0.7551 degrees. Okay, the purpose of this notebook was simply to play around a little bit with linear regression that you see how you are using here um, scikit-learn and can probably then also adapt this kind of notebook to other kind of data sets and to try then to make predictions with a linear classifier or no sorry with a linear regression model okay so i hope you have enjoyed the notebook the lecture will continue with another basic machine learning algorithm which will be decision trees